Today, we become legends. Crowd control is a huge part of Smite. No one likes to get CC chained and die, and everyone likes to CC chain an enemy until they die. But which gods are truly the best and worst in terms of how their CCs perform in-game? Well, I made an algorithm to put that to the test. I gathered data from every single Smite god about four key areas of their CC toolkit. Factor number one, potency. The power level of the actual CCs. A stun is more powerful than a slow and deserves a higher overall score. This is the only quote unquote subjective data since I scored the CC types myself based on my all CC types ranked video. The rest of the data is just numbers from ability descriptions that is entirely objective. Category two, duration. A longer CC should get the better overall score if all of the factors are equal. Number three, frequency. How often the CC can be used and applied to enemies, basically the cooldown of the ability that has the CC. And finally, AoE. A giant circular AoE CC like Hunbat's ultimate should score higher than a single target line CC, or the factors equal. The algorithm then takes these variables, does fancy math on them, and returns a single numerical value for the power level of the CC of that ability. Do this for every ability a god has, and boom, you have a CC score for that god. The basics of the maths here is that the potency of the CC is a base score that changes according to the power level of the CC type, cripples are 7 points, stuns are 15 points, knockups are 22 points, etc. Once the base score is decided depending on the kind of CC, the duration, frequency and AoE multipliers are all applied to get a final number. Taking an example, Achilles 1 is a stun, so 15 points, it lasts 1 second, so a 1 times multiplier. It's a smaller than 30 range cone, so a 1.25 times multiplier, and its frequency is less than or equal to 20 seconds, so it gets a 1.1 times frequency multiplier. Multiplying the base 15 points by all of these, and you get a final number of 20.6 for that ability. Do this for all a god's abilities, then repeat for every god, and you get this table. The black lines are where a god's score terminates and a new god's abilities begin. I put a ton of effort into manually collecting all this data for every single god in the game with over 400 CC abilities, and of course working on the algorithm itself to make sure it returns reasonable values, so if you do enjoy these kind of videos, why not subscribe to the channel so you can catch when I do them. But enough with the math class, let's jump into the results of my data and talk about any interesting things we see. So I'm going to be showcasing all the data in a tier list format, I feel like that makes the most sense to be able to see you know, who are really the top performing CC gods and who are the bottom performing ones according to my algorithm. Each tier is effectively a range of overall scores for the final value, so after all the multipliers have been applied and all of the god CC abilities have been added up together for the single god score, that's what these scores will be. And yeah, let's just get into placing some gods and, and talk about what I've found with this data, you know, what the algorithm has found effectively. So in the bottom tiers here we have Alquang, Kamazot, Thoth, Ula, and Zeus. So these are the only five in the very bottom tier. These are gods that basically have like one CC ability and it's not an amazing one. So like for example, Zeus has a slow on his detonate and that's his only CC. Ulla has the Axe stun, his only CC. Thoth has the Root as his only CC. Kamazots has the slow on his two as his only CC, I believe. And Alquang's only CC is his uh, ultimate banish. So a lot of these gods have either bad CCs slash single target CCs and only one of them. And that's why they're quite far down on the tier list. You know, even though Ulla does have a stun, it's single target, quite a long cooldown. And he doesn't have any other kind of CC to back that up. So ultimately, they, they do end up in this lower tier. Of course, using an algorithm instead of, you know, using my own brain to place these gods is going to result in a few anomalies. But I think this bottom tier actually doesn't really have any anomalies. I think all of these five gods do deserve to be very at the bottom of the tier list. You know, they basically have one CC and that's it. And so this is what the 20 to 40 points category is looking like. For the most part, these seem like reasonable placements that have been filled out by the algorithm here. You know, in this category, we generally have gods with either a couple of weak CCs or maybe one quite quite strong CC that's boosting them up slightly over the less than 20 points category down here. Uh, for Morrigan, I obviously didn't use her ultimate because if Morrigan can use her ultimate, then she's literally just the best god in the game, but with an extra stun. So she would always be at the top of the tier list. So I decided to go against that. Uh, Shibalanke has like a slow and then the global blind is actually quite good because my algorithm applied a significantly higher multiplier to global CCs. You know, like single target CCs would have been one times multiplier. And then as you go up, they'll get slightly higher, but the global multiplier is three times. So if you've got a CC see that affects everyone on the map guaranteed like Jibalanke ult, it's going to get a fair few points. Which is why he's probably here rather than being down in the, in the bottom category there, because a global blind is going to give him a fair few. Other interesting ones, so Hell is up here, which is strange because her only CC I believe is her Dark Stance 2. 
if I remember correctly, but it is quite strong. It's a really strong slow. It's a decent size AoE, uh, fairly low cooldown, so it will get a decent amount of points there based on the multipliers and things like that, even with it only being a slow. Uh, Nemesis here talking about slows. You know, Nem only has two slows in her kit, but they're both pretty strong. The ultimates probably scored quite lowly with the algorithm because it's single target and it doesn't really like single target CCs all that much. Uh, Arachne being here as well. I would have expected Arachne to be in the very bottom tier, but I guess she does have a solid slow and a single target stun as well. Uh, for Achilles, actually the only CC ability he has is his one. Uh, so interesting that he kind of got bumped up a fair bit here. Also, the tiers aren't ordered in terms of points. So like, it's not like the left has the most points in the tier and the, the right has like the very least points in the tier. They aren't ordered that way. And one final thing we'll talk about in this tier is uh, Changa. So obviously Changa's ultimate can stun for five seconds in an AoE, but it won't be five seconds to every single target. Basically, I applied some funky mass to Changa to make sure the algorithm wasn't recognizing it as uh, just an AoE five second stun because that would give her an insane amount of points. And that's your 40 to 60 points tier. Think of this as effectively like a C tier, with the 20 or 40 points being D tier gods and the less than 20 points effectively being F tier gods. You know, they're, they're garbage for CC, let's be real. And so in this tier, we, we still mostly have uh, damage based gods as we've been seeing further down. You know, there's very few tanks here. You know, Achilles, I guess, is one of the only ones so far. Odin up here, the mana. Uh, but generally, it's mostly been DPS gods so far because obviously, of course, damage-based gods generally have less CC than tanky-based gods in Smite. So it makes sense to see a lot of these DPS gods like further down here. It's pretty interesting to see Ra up here because all Ra really has is like a slow slash blind on his two and that's his only CC. So I'm not entirely sure how he got so high up on the points rankings uh, when the algorithm spat him out. But it seems like, uh, I guess maybe just the AOE radius was quite big or something or like it's a long duration. So he got quite high points for it. Plus it is two CCs on one ability, which the algorithm will count. You know, it will count as like an AOE blind and an AOE slow. It's not like just one score for it. It'll add those two together for the ability. So that, that's probably how Ra got so high up here. To be honest, if, if I was making this as my own tier list, you know, Ra would be down here, potentially even down here, but uh, the algorithm places him here for now. Uh, Chernobog, another interesting one. As we talked about with Jablanke's uh, global ultimate, Chernobog applies a global slow whenever he ults, so he got quite a few points from that based on the algorithm because uh, it, it rates global ultimates much higher than it rates like smaller AoE or single target abilities. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all we've got to talk about, about 40 to 60, you know, mostly still just DPS goals with like a, maybe one or two decent CCs. Uh, Ra was an interesting one as well, but but not really many tanks showing up so far. We're just seeing like the tricklings of a couple of tanks being mixed in with a lot of the DPSs like Odin for mana and Achilles. But I think in these higher tiers, we should start seeing a fair few more tanks. So yeah, wow, I, I was very right on there being more, more tanks in these higher tiers. So we have like Amaterasu, Athena, Bologna, Kabraken, Guan Yu, Fenrir, kind of. Uh, Terra, Wukong, Sobek, Hercules, like loads of tanks in this upper tier now. And also noticeably quite a lot of mages. You know, we have stuff like Nox, which I guess it makes sense for her to be quite a bit higher up because uh, her 2-1 combo is extremely deadly. Uh, but like Morgan Le Fay, I guess she has the good fear that a knock up and knock back is, is probably very good when counted by the algorithm because it'll count it as a knock up and then a knock back instead of just a knock back. Uh, Raijin here as well, probably because he can do long duration taunts and fears with his ultimate. Uh, Hebo being here makes no sense to me. I guess that's like a mess up by the algorithm. I mean, yes, he has a good knock up, but that's kind of it. You know, the slow on the cap is nice, but it wouldn't give him that many points, I feel like. So maybe it's just overrated his knock up a little bit here. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, Hebo probably shouldn't be up here. You know, especially not with the likes of Sobek and Hercules and Athena and all these powerhouse like CC bots. Athena is like lower than I actually thought she would be. Probably same thing with a couple of these other tanks. I think it's mostly because she relies very heavily on her taunt. You know, the rest of her kit basically doesn't have CC other than a slow on her dash, so... You're relying entirely on that taunt to get you all the points to move you up this tier list, and that's a bit risky, but... Obviously, of these 60 to 80 points, almost all of them will have come from Athena taunt. Scaddy being up here is actually pretty interesting. You know, it, actually, Hunters do have, uh, I believe it's the third most CC in the game. They have more CC than Mages and more CC than Assassins. I know this because I've done previous videos on CC, and Hunters definitely have the best CC overall out of the squishy classes. So it's interesting to see a few up here based on the algorithm. Scaddy has, like, I guess, a big Rue, a big Slow, also Slippery Surface, which is quite a nasty CC. And then we've also got, like, Danza up here. I guess, like, the Taunt towards the Chug is really good. I think he stuns on his ultimate, if I remember correctly 
upgrade maybe uh, a couple of other CCs. Uh, Kernanos, pretty much just by looking at his ult here, you know, he has a root on his two, but that giant AoE polymorph is, is gonna give him quite a few points. And an interesting one, Bastet. You know, Bastet used to be, before the rework, one of the gods in the game with the Lee CC. I think she only had a root or a slow or something on her three, and that was literally it. Maybe the cat slowed as well, but she really didn't have, like, much good CC, but now she does. You know, she has the three that gives CC. The ult is amazing CC, you know, being able to pull someone towards you. It's almost like a Fenrir ult in a way. So yeah, Bastet absolutely rocketed up the tier list based on the rework. If, if it was pre-reworked Bastet, she would definitely be somewhere down here, I think. But these are the remaining gods we have to fill up the remaining two tiers of 80 to 100 and 100 plus, which is going to be the true greats with a, a lot of CC. And as you can see, it's not all tanks left. There's a couple of hunters, a couple of mages, a couple of assassins. So let's get to placing these. So there we go with our second top tier, the 80 to 100 points category. So starts off with 300s, which is pretty interesting. Artemis and Anher make a bit of sense being higher up, but maybe not quite this high up. Apollo, I think, just got overrated by the algorithm because uh, he has technically two knockups, one on his dash and one on his ult. Even though they're not great knockups, they, the algorithm still recognizes them as knockups and is like, okay, let's give it a lot of points because, you know, knockups are good in Smite, they're uncleansable. But in reality, Apollo probably shouldn't be up here. He's one of the higher CC hunters, don't get me wrong, but I think he should be down in maybe 60 to 80. I think the algorithm's overrated him by putting him this high up. You know, because he's among the likes of things like King Arthur and Ganesha and Bacchus and some of these like Xing Chen, like these, these powerful guardians with a lot of CC, you know, Osiris, constant slows and stones and roots and all that kind of stuff. And down here, we're also starting to see a lot of the kind of slightly more damage oriented guardians being down here, you know, like Bacchus and Xing Chen. Uh, Ganesha obviously doesn't fit that, but I think we'll see a lot of the more like true supportive guardians with like a lot of CC being up in this very top tier. Uh, interesting one, you know, obviously E set supports become very popular recently. If uh, if I had done this video like a year ago, it would have probably recognized that he said does have very powerful CC, you know, based on the algorithm, and it would have put it here, and potentially that could have sparked something, but obviously a bit late on that one. <laughs> uh, Persephone, basically up here due to her ultimate. Uh, that's one of the most powerful CC ultimates in the game. You know, you get to lock down a single target for a long time and also cause movement disruption to everyone around that target. But even then, I think Persephone is slightly overrated. You know, it's giving her ultimate an insanely high score to, to put her up here. It must be. But then other than that, these ones are, are pretty reasonable. I guess Merlin's quite high, but that's mainly just because he's a stand switcher and has access to a multitude of different CCs. Uh, same thing with King Arthur. His CCs aren't amazingly powerful, but he has a lot of them. Uh, Gilgamesh being the opposite, I guess. You know, he basically just has dropkick and I guess the wins, but uh, the dropkick will provide a lot of points because it's a knockup into a stun. And then we have stuff like, you know, Rat and Thor, just like really good, you know, knock up on the ult, stun on the ult, also an extra stun for both of them in their basic abilities, stuff like that. Just solid, like, general CC gods, you know, backers, that kind of stuff. Even Baron Samdi, who has, like, quite a bit of uh, CC on his three in his ultimate. And so there we are, the best of the best. Uh, mostly guardians with, you know, maybe a couple of slightly more CC and tanky heavy warriors. And there are also a few anomalies which we'll talk about in a second. So yeah, basically just, we're looking at a lot of guardians here. You know, we got stuff like Geb, Ymir, Ares, Cthulhu, who actually, by the way, was the best god in, in terms of this algorithm. Cthulhu got rated like 160 something points, I think, which is quite significantly above ever anyone else. And that's basically because he's a guardian that's designed to have great CC, but he's also a, effectively a kind of stand switcher in a way so he has access to more ccs in total he's just gonna get a very high score and you know your typical stuff tier uh sylvanas kuzumbo kumba Kana, of course uh Yomanganda, very strong as well, good showing. Ymir, that kind of stuff. But then let's talk about a few of the outliers that I think either shouldn't be up here or like maybe just explain why they're up here. So we have Apwash. You know, you really wouldn't think Apwash are being up on the level of some of these guardians with CC, but the algorithm rated him that way. My guess is the algorithm's massively overrated his stun because it probably assumes that he just always will land a stun. You know, they'd have to be healed during it. And so that probably thinks is a really powerful ability. You know, an AoE uh, 1.5 second stun, that's pretty strong. But of course we know it's not always an AoE 1.5 second stun. They have to be at a healing during it. Because other than that, what does Apwash really have other than slows and stuff like that? So in my opinion, Apwash shouldn't be up here. I think the algorithm's kind of uh, messed up a little bit there. Uh, Chak is an interesting one, you know, just has a lot of really good slows and that ult, you know, the ult just gave him so many points, I would imagine. Given that it's a, a knock up into a silence and a giant AoE, like that's going to get him a ton of points. That's the main reason he's up here. Uh, Cupid, very similar thing. Cupid is a cripple into slow and then when it pops into a mez, all in a giant AoE. And again, that's the only reason Cupid's up here. His base kit, yeah, he has a stun on Heart Bomb, but the main reason he's up here is because of that giant AoE CC ultimate. Hades was a quite interesting one, but I guess it makes sense 
sense because he has a giant AoE fear, and fears are one of the strongest CCs in the game. Uh, the ultimate, of course, is uh, is fairly nice, but vortexes aren't that great. And the final super interesting one in this tier, I guess, is Poseidon. Uh, this one, I think, came mostly from his ultimate again because his ultimate is a stun into a knockup for people in the center. It's not just a knockup, and so the algorithm probably overrated it that way because it thought it stunned into knockup when it kind of doesn't, but it does if you get me. Uh, Poseidon also has, you know, like a cripple and I believe it's a vortex on his on his whirlpool. Could also be a slow, but I think it's a cripple and a vortex. And then also a knockback on his one. So just in general, Poseidon CCs, they're good, but the algorithm has overrated them for sure. But that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I'll zoom out so you can see the whole tier list. Is that good enough? Yeah, just about. So yeah, what did you guys think of this kind of video? Now, it's pretty interesting because I'm not really ranking these. I'm just creating an algorithm that will rank them for me. So I guess it's a little bit more interesting and we can look at certain things, you know, like some of these mages and hunters that are all the way up in these top tiers and how they got there, you know, what what kind of things they have that would allow them to be 100 plus in the eyes of the algorithm anyway, not in the eyes of me. I, I think a lot of these gods shouldn't be up here. But I just thought it'd be an interesting way to do it. You know, it removes my bias from the situation as much as possible. You know, the only thing that is biased to me is the initial scores that I gave to each CC based on my 25 CCs ranked video. But again, that video did quite well. There wasn't a massive amount of disagreement on the overall rankings in that video. So I feel like they're, they're reasonable power rankings for the CCs. But yeah, be sure to drop a like on the video before you leave and subscribe for more. And I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.